Hi, I'm here with my Luminart Twinkling H2Os. Um, these Twinkling H2Os come in a little container like this and they are stone hard. So what you do is you just spray some water into them and it activates them and then uh, you have lovely iridescent color. Luminart also makes a pigment uh, powder which is really very um, rich in color and it is also iridescent. And I was first introduced to the pigment uh, powders at Ghent at Scraptastic by, fin by Finnebear or Anna. And she allowed us to mix some colors just to see how it was. So you just take a little scoop, a tiny, you just put a bit of scoop at the end of your little stick and add water into it. And you have these lovely, lovely colors. Um, I haven't been able to find that in Greece yet. And the pigment has a binding agent in it as well, so it, it doesn't come off once you spray it. I, I used the spray to color this little thing. Okay, let me just tell you what I'm doing here. I've been following Creative Jumpstart with Natalie Kalbach and a lot of her guest artists. And a girl called Marsha Falk showed us how to make molds. Out of cardboard so what you basically do is you cut a piece of cardboard corrugated board and you soak it and once it's wet it all falls apart so you peel off the two pieces of uh, cardboard from either side and then you land up with lovely cards you know like craft paper and then you take the inside bits and you break them to bits and use that pulp to make molds. How lucky was I when I opened a box and saw this so now I have a stamp but that's besides the point. What I did is because I had these Mod Podge molds and as you can see the detail is very very fine that that one there is this bit here. I put my pulp in a blender and I blended it and to make it slightly more uh, waterproof I added a, a a product that we have here in Europe called Powertex which makes things waterproof. It did uh, retard the drying time somewhat but I wanted it because when you color stuff um, you don't want, especially because this is paper, the moment that this will get wet it's going to lose its embossed detail. Okay so this is why the twinkling edge to O's are perfect to color these type of things. Um, so I've just hydrated um, my little disc and if you want it um, if you want the color less intense for instance let's say that was too blue all you do is is put a tiny bit of water on your mat and straight away your color well that wasn't enough but straight straight away my brush still had a lot of stuff on it. Straight away your color becomes less less bright. Although for this one I want it very bright. Can you see? It's really magic. I have used it to color papers. Um, I color my... These, these are just my samples. I don't know if it's picking up how iridescent it is. That's the light colors. I don't think you'll see the light colors on here. This green is one of my favorite. It's like a yellowy green. It's more yellow. There's a green one. Okay, and then I also use it to color fabric. Over here you can see I've colored a little crocheted flower. And that's another goodie but that's a white one a button that I have made I have also used these embellishments here are homemade and they use them are paper clay that I've used to mold and this one for instance is paper clay that I've rolled on a board and I've just stamped I've stamped on the clay and then when it's still wet I cut around it that's the little flower I um, use there. Okay, 
So these are the little paper molds. Can you see the fleur de lis? I should have maybe first cut it out, but I just wanted to show you first. That's how the paper mold comes out, but I, I should have maybe first cut around it so that I could color so I could colorize it properly. You see you, you'll just cut around there and do that. I'm not going to sit and cut it properly, but you can see how lovely the colors are. And then what I do, I don't waste this. If I if I leave this on my brush, it's going to get um, hard. The brush is going to get hard as it dries. So I just um, have a little bottle of colors. So that, that's blue. So eventually this will end up making a blue spray if I just put the blues in. Or I can add it to an existing blue spray if I want to tone it out and so forth. Anyway, I... Um, put my sprays in my mini misters these days because they've all um, my other mists have all blocked funnily enough these two mists haven't blocked that I made at the beginning of the year they're still good these are with the Lumen Art so um, if I wanted to add a bit of green to the flower I'll show you now another thing you can do is you can um, colorize your little chipboard pieces. It needs a little while to to get soft. You can see I'm using this straight away now. The color isn't as intense yet because um, it hasn't hydrated properly. can you see so it's it's really versatile to have with you and to to use a little stuff like this are really good for me because I like to make my own embellishments I live in Athens so um, we don't have things readily available so and I love to customize things for um, my use. You could use it on jewelry. And interestingly enough, this this is the Mod Podge uh, molding system, this here, that makes the molds. And I was a bit apprehensive about how I would color it, but it takes it, it takes it, it sticks onto it. It works pretty well. I would maybe give this two coats. Can you see? Just let um, let that dry and then use it again. Okay. It's really pretty when you blend colors on on these homemade ornaments. Really nice. If even if you add a little bit of beige into that leaf now, it really blends beautifully and it gives a dimension. I could maybe even put a darker pink onto the rose. Use a darker red. Like I said, this one I sprayed with the spray. I wouldn't um, spray the paper ornaments because I'm afraid I'd lose my detail. Okay, so if you do have some Luminar Twinkling H2Os, take them out and play with them. Don't forget them. They're really fun and they do color paper. I once made a card, you'll find it on my blog. In fact, I pinned it today on Pin Interest using uh, the Prima papers that you color. Let me see where I have them. Oops, I don't have it here. Anyway. But you can definitely colorize paper. This is not Prima, this is just something else. But let's let's say for instance we wanted to add some color here. Can you see this? This would be... Straight away, straight away you can customize paper for what you want. And 
I think that is so important, especially with this economic problem we're having these days. Um, I prefer to buy uh, materials that I can use to customize my uh, projects instead of something that is um, just so... Can you see how nice that looks? So straight away, straight away, if we want some blue, and it, that, that blue might be too dark, what you do is you just add a tiny bit of water on your, on your mat. And I'm going to land up with a bit of like, okay, I'm, I'm now just putting it on for the sake of time. Can you see? And and your project straight away looks looks different. It's it's amazing. Okay, girls and boys, I uh, love you, leave you, and I hope you have a good Sunday. Bye.